What is going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to That Sounds Terrible. On today's episode, we are going to take a look at the satellite neutron on this sound check. And uh, what we're going to do, uh, I was super excited when I filmed uh, my Klon video from Acorn, but you know, I'd already, I'd already done it and, and I wanted to reverse it so that I could kind of show the, the effect that it has. Uh, so what we're doing is we're going to take the phase inverter tube. There's only two preamp tubes. Um, and I have two 12AX7s, um, the electronic mar electric harmonics uh, preamp tubes. And we're going to take one out. We're going to take the phase inverter out and we're going to replace it with um, it's a JJ12AU7. Uh, so that's going to reduce that gain down a lot tremendously. Um, so in the beginning, I had it dimed out. There's two knobs. There's volume and tone. So the tone or the volume maxed out. Uh, that's what you heard. And then I went to noon, and I went to nine o'clock. So it's currently on the nine o'clock position. The tone knob is kind of interactive, and it's currently at one o'clock. So this is kind of where I leave the amp when I play. Right? But when you drop down that phase inverter, when you put that 12 AU in and it reduces the amount of gain that's going into the power tubes, um, to me it gives the amp a little more flexibility. I can clean it up really nicely uh, when I roll it back to the, uh, or flip to the neck pickup, because I roll the volume down quite a bit. Uh, and then I can push the pedal to push the amp harder. So in this episode we're going to use my Electric Love, and it is the Overdrive. Uh, ben did a great job on the overdrive. I really liked it a lot. And I like how it sounds with this amp. Um, Klons and this particular overdrive sound really good. And, believe it or not, the uh, No Knob Sense by Eris FX. Uh, this one, this particular one, was a gift from truck driver Sean. Um, and that one sounds really good because of whatever fixed EQ that it is. It, it really tightens the amp up and, and adds some brightness to it. It is kind of a dark sounding amp. But um, anyways, so I have the Invader 50 in my Mojo Tone 2x12 Imperial cabinet mic'd up with a uh, SM57. So that's going into my um, Black Lion Audio Quad Tour preamp, and that's going directly into the interface, which is the Rodecaster Pro, and that's what I'm recording with. And then the video is, of course, my Zoom Q2N 4K. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to do. I'm going to turn the amp off, let it cool down, then I'll come back and I'll swap the tubes out, turn it on, let it warm back up. It's already been on about 45 minutes, so I'll give it a 45-minute window to warm those tubes up, and I'll film it again. We'll see how it sounds, and you can tell me at the end, and we'll talk about it a little bit, and we'll do some more comparison. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so we've got the tubes swapped out. Get my fat ass back in the chair here. Um... So we've got the tube swapped out. So as you can hear, there's a dramatic difference. And I will I will try to cut each clip and post them at the end. Um, I don't know if I'll actually do that or not. It's just a lot of work. Uh, and my video editing skills are very minimal. But um, the reason I enjoy this 12AU7 um, is because it allows me the flexibility uh, I'm pretty sure the room mic's working, but um, when I roll, when I roll to that neck pickup, it's only on like three and a half. So. It sounds incredible um, when it's rolled back like that and it, it just cleans up so nicely. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the pedal on. Uh, the volume is about 1 o'clock. The gain is about 10 o'clock and the tone is to taste. And we'll do a comparison on the bridge pickup with my standard settings which is 9 o'clock on the volume, 1 o'clock on the tone. Alright, here we go.
So, as you can see, you just get a lot more control when you just drop down that tube a little bit. Um, like I said, the 12AU7 I think is 70% gain versus 100% um, on the uh, tube, on the, uh, the fucking charts. Uh, so I'm gonna try an AT7. Uh, I don't know if I have any, I might have to order one. Um, you know, I just ordered tubes for the beginning of the year for pretty much everything in the room. I've got a ton of other ones over here, but I don't think I have a 12 AT7. Anyways, we'll do some research. Um, I might hit up, uh, I believe it's Adam Grimm at Satellite Amps uh, and just kind of pick his brain uh, a little bit or something. And, and, you know, later on I'll do another video. But uh, it's, it's a lot of fun when you just kind of change one little component when it's that big, right? So here's the one we took out. It's just a standard 12AX7 from Electro Harmonics. And, um, you know, putting that 12AU7 really did, you know, liven it up for me. Feels like a whole different amp, so. No Dennis Casey by any means um, and you know with the 12 AU7 it kind of does sound a little more chimey uh, towards Flog and Molly uh, more than it does the aggressive aggression that um, uh, Johnny Two Bags get with Social D and I know both of those guys run uh, some satellite amps and that's kind of what led me to this company uh, a small builder out of LA I think um, I could be wrong on that but uh, they're super awesome amps. They're old school. They're they just have a real quality to them and a real feel that you don't get from you know some of these high gain monsters. And and definitely it's it's not supposed to you know it's not supposed to have that. But um, anyways, you know I'll try to cut these up and post them again here at the end of the video. And uh, you guys can tell me what you think. Uh, did you hear any major differences? Uh, anyways, we'll catch you on the next one.